all week. You the wrong here. Uh, go, the needle stick. Go. Ha <laughs> ha. No, honey, no, no. Well, what's this one? Oh, but what a color. Looks like many more flowers out here. Just every other cafe. We must see. Stay tuned. We will see you Oh, well, I'm just speechless. That lunch ball chicken? I didn't know it was ever boiled. Gosh, I had no idea that people live like this right out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Two what? Thanks. One. Three. I don't know what to do, but I'm going to take a to carry. All right, I'm going hit. You know so many American words. Do you know what it is? A hick is one who lives in a sea.
good, Mary. What is good? Tell him he's a stingy bastard. Stingy bastard! It's great, Mary. Stingy bastard! I love that reason I taught English.
Major. I mean, you come here back. I'm a lieutenant. Lieutenant? Lieutenant. I am uh, Lieutenant. You're on this rock? Yeah, it's going on that beach. Why? Oh, we're broke. A little out of the south of the real piece. Oh, uh, so you've been up where they use real bullets? Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, in 
Well, sir, I know what to do. You've got quite an assignment, son. How long did you think you could last there, sending out messages before the Japs come? I think it'd be okay if I could take a man with me to really do the country. Headquarters tells me there's a French civilian here who's going to plant a patient on Marie Louise Island. Marie Louise? That's a good spot, right on the bottleneck. What's this Frenchman's name? Emile Debec. Meet me in my office for half an hour, kid. Yes, sir. Come on, Bill. We might just get into this war yet. He's attractive. <laughs> I just 
I don't know what you want to know, sir. Miss Fallbush, Captain Bracker wants to know, did you discuss politics? No, sir. Would you have discussed politics, Commander? <laughs> now, <laughs> what we are particularly interested in, when these fellows come out from France, it's generally because they've had some trouble. Has he told you anything about that? What about his family? His family? Well, he has no family. No wife, no one. He hasn't any children? No, sir. And you say he hasn't told you why he's left France? Yes, sir. He left France because he killed a man. Did he, uh, did he tell you why? No, but he will if I ask him. Well, Miss Fulvus, that's exactly what we'd like to have you do. Find out as much as you can about him, his background, his opinions, and why he killed this man in France. In other words, you want me to spy on him? It's something like that. What? Do you suspect him of something? No, it's just that we don't know very much about him. Will you help us, Miss Fulvus? I'll try. Thank you. You may go now if you wish. I don't know that much about him, really. Do I? He's kept a few secrets from her, hasn't he? Well, you don't bring a couple of Polynesian children on a woman right off the bat. I'm afraid we aren't going to get much out of her. She's obviously in love with him. I find that hard to believe, sir. They tell me he's a middle-aged man. Katie, <laughs> it's a common mistake for boys of your age and athletic ability to underestimate a man who's reached his maturity. I didn't mean, sir, that... Young women frequently find a grown man attractive, strange as it may seem to you. I myself am over 50. I am a bachelor. And people, I do not by any means consider myself through. <laughs> Okay, good. See what you have. Do you play bridge? Yes, sir. Got any money? Yes, sir. I'll take it away from you. Yes. <laughs> now, what makes you so damn sure this mission won't work out? Marina Lee's Island is 24 miles long by 3 miles wide. Let's say every time they turn on a message, they move to another hill. It seems to me, looking at this thing, realistically, realistically, they could last a uh, hour. Of course, it would be worth it. If it were the right week. With decent information, our site can get moving. Operation Alligator, get off the can. Here it is, sir. I got it. Okay, Bill. See you at Chow. See you at Chow, Bill. Oh, uh, see you at Chow. You get the address, right? I think so. Miss Amelia Fortuna, 325 Newfit Avenue, Shaker Heights, Cleveland, Ohio. That's right. I'm going to pack it myself. Okay, sir. Well, she might be. Wow. Well, maybe she is. 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 Well, maybe she is
Maybe she's not. Goodbye, Lieutenant. You have a lot. Listen, you don't know so much about this job. You might want to read over that letter two or three more times. I'll show you what I think of that idea. Don't say I didn't warn you.
dress, would you? We're only laughing two of them. Evening dresses. Only two of them. I brought. <laughs>
I want to impress you with three things. First, you are a civilian, and you don't have to go. Nor is there a way of our making you go. Second, this is a very dangerous mission, and there's no guarantee you'll survive, or that it will do any good. Third, it might do a great good. It might be the means of turning the tide of the war in this area. I understand all these things. Are you ready to give us your answer? Yes, I am. My answer must be no. When a man faces death, he must weigh his values very carefully. He must weigh the sweetness of his life against the thing he has asked to die for. The probability of death is great for the both of us. I know the island well, Dr. Gable. I am not certain that I believe what you ask me to do is. We're asking you to help us lay the Japs. It's as simple as that. We're against the Japs. I know what you are against. But what are you for? When I was 22, I thought the world hated bullies as much as I did. I was foolish. I killed them. And I was forced to flee to an island. Since then, I have asked no help from anyone or any country. Since then, I have seen these bullies multiply and grow strong. We all sat by and watched. Ah, oh, the hell with this Debeck. Let's be honest. Aren't he's the guy who's loving the girl and you're putting her in front of everything else in the world? Yes. I don't care about my life without more than anything else in the world. This is the most important thing to me. This, I believe in. This I am sure of. This I have. I cannot risk losing it. Good day. He's an honest man, but he's wrong. Of course, we can't guarantee him a better world than we win. The point is, we can be damn sure it'll be worse if we lose. Can't we? Well, can't we? Of course. Gable, there's a bottle of scotch in my bottom drawer. I'll see you tomorrow. This is one of these. Commander Harbison, the old man walked right out on me with all these orders to be signed. And there's another delegation of French planes here complaining about that stolen pit. They want to see these to get barbecued. And Commander Harbison. Okay, okay, I'll take care of it. Well, all right, sir. What should I do, Commander Harbison? Go back to my outfit tonight? No, I'll take a couple of days off and unwind. Unwind? Sure, take a boat. Fishing. Only a few words. She 
speak French or français. Je parle français. Moi aussi. Un peu. Are you afraid of me? Or are they going to go?
going out. Try not to touch it.
important in common, very much in common. We are both in love. Well, yes, but more important. We, for the same kind of people, fundamentally, you and me, we appreciate things, we get enthusiastic about things. It's really quite exciting when two people are like that. We're not blasé, you know what I mean? We're both knuckleheads, both golf guy <laughs> I love you. I love you. 
Good. Well, I can't understand is how some guys ain't got the artistic imagination to put gas in the channel. So a show could be a success, especially when they're on the committee. You're on the committee too. Why didn't you tell us it wasn't gassed up? I'm acting this show. I'm stage manager and producer. I can't figure out everything, can I? Sure you can. Just put your two heads together. <laughs> Gotta have a 
It's, it's, it's a man's watch, but it's a good one. It belonged to my grandfather. It's kind of a lucky piece, too. My dad carried it over the last one. Beautiful, isn't it? When I feel your first time, I know you're a good man for the other. She's a good girl for you. You are a special good baby. <laughs> Her curls are hurtly burly. 
Miss Warbush, I'd like you to know I consider you one of the most wonderful women in the entire world. Given the fact you're an officer, but I can't go on being such a heel as to let you think I thought of you those flowers. Well, but you did give um, them to me. The I'll be around the area if you need me. Um, hey, sing out. What's the matter, Billy, the nurse? Diplomatic difficulties with France? Joe Cable. Who let you out of the hospital? By the way. Joe, you're trying to get over to Valley High again? That's what I really were telling you about? Leah? Mm -hmm. I just saw her for the last time, I guess. I love her. And yet I just heard myself saying I can't ever marry her. What the hell's the matter with me, Nelly? What kind of guy am I anyway? You're all right, Joe. I'm right, you're just far from home. I'm so far from home, Joe. Nelly, I must speak with you. Emil, I... Will you excuse us, Lieutenant? No, wait, Joe, please stay. Wait, please. Emil, I... I didn't mean to call you. You have asked for a transfer. What? What does it mean? I'll explain to call you tomorrow. No, no. What does it mean, then? I can't marry you. Do you understand? I, I can't marry you. No. Because of my children. No, not because your children. They're, they're sweet. It is. So I follow your mother then. The mother or not. Yes. I can't help it. It isn't as if I can give you a good reason. There is no reason. This is emotional. This is something that's born in me. No, it's not. I do not believe that this is something that is bothering you. Then why do I feel the way I do? All I know is I can't help it. I can't help it. Joe, explain how we feel, Joe. Nelly. Joe. Dinah? Dinah, are you ready? Yes, Nelly. Oh, I'll go with you. Nelly. Nelly. What makes her talk like that? Why do you have these feelings, you and she? I do not believe that this is something that is bothering you. I do not believe it. It's not boring you. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
God is right here. We know that God is right here. This is a good place to be. We know that God is taking away from you. So there is no place. Keep so close.
submarine fit in between those rocks without being observed? Yes, if you go to shop. And after I land, what do I do? You will meet up with my friends, a skilled in the Two black hunters, wonderful men. They will hide us in the hills. Us? Are, are you going with me? Yes, you're too young to go out alone. God, let's go cry Captain Brackett. Oh, wait till that old bastard Brackett hears this. He'll jump right out of his skin. I would like to see this kind of jump. Come on! <laughs> Sir, I was just thinking about my uncle. 
You know they only know I was talking about? Them. I used to tell my old man I'd be never worth a dime. <laughs> Can't you imagine a guy in a smile? Why would you do this, Phyllis? <laughs> what would make a man do a thing like this? Well, sir, the fellas keep moving. If you're itching to take a trip and pick up a few souvenirs, you kind of have to pour an in if you uh, get the picture. How did you know about it? I didn't know about it exactly, but I heard the tank cable talking that fellow with that. Knew something was in the air. A project. And that's what I like, Captain. Projects. Don't you? Phyllis, you've broken every regulation in the book, and by God, Captain Bracken and I are going to throw it at you. <coughs> sir, can I march in? My co pilot watched this whole thing, you know, and he thinks that this fellow dosed on a rubber boat with all those planes flying above him caused kind of a, a diversionary action. While the Jap guns were busy shooting at the planes and at Phyllis on the other side of the island, that sub was flooding into that little cove and depositing the Frenchman and Joe Cable in behind those rocks. So what do you want me to do? Give this guy a bronze star? Oh. I don't want any bronze star, but I could use a little freedom, a little room to move around in, if you know what I mean, if you uh, get the picture. Get out! Get the hell out! Yes, sir! <laughs> so what would you have done, Iron Belly? I'd have thrown him in the brig, and I will too if I get the ghost of the chance. Sir, he got a message. I'm so we are here. This is our first chance to send news to you. We have made contact with former friends of mine. We have set up quarters in a mango tree. No room. But I love you. First, the weather. Rain clouds over Bhutan Hill, the treasuries, Choiseul, and New Georgia. We expect rain in this region from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Bottom? Oh, my friend Joe corrects me. Oh, 900 to 1400. And now, our military expert, Joe. All you need Marine and Army pilots write this down. Service crack. 19 true barges headed down the bottom line, speed about 11 knots. Auto pass the at about 20 hundreds an hour, escorted by heavy warships. There ought to be some way to drop off a few of these. As for aircraft, there is little indication of activity at the moment. The 22 bombers, Betty's, the 50600 headed southwest. There was a fire escort not headed. They should reach. Oh boy! Where are you going? Told him it's not take off. They'll be gone awake tonight. Wait! Get <laughs> down, girl! There. That. You know what I like, Bill? Projects, don't you? <laughs> Listen carefully. Seeing the day unlimited, 33 fighters, zeros, have moved in from Bougainville. Their course is approximately 23 degrees. Undoubtedly, heavy bombers will bomb. Got that? Well, gentlemen, here's the hot tip for today. Joe and the Frenchman have spotted 20 surface craft heading southeast from Bella La Bella. Christmas is just two weeks away. Let's give those two carriages a present. A beautiful view of no ships coming back. Okay with me. Let's go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. 
My friends and allies, my message today must be brief and sad. Lieutenant Cable, my friend Joe, died last night. He died from wounds he received three days ago. I will never know a fighter man. I wish I could have told you the good news. The Japanese are pulling out and there is great confusion. Our guess is that the Japs will try to evacuate troops from Cape Esperance tonight. You may not hear from us for several days. We must move again. Two planes are overhead. They are not first, we think. We believe that. What? Sea sequence. 
You all be me. I'll knock it off. That stuff's issues. We all got it. Who you trying to fool? These Marines are getting smarter every day. All right, all right. Stay with your own unit. And to you two, for heaven's sake, don't get spread out over here. We're trying to get this thing organized as quickly as possible. So for God's sake, stay with your outfit. Say, Stevie, you belong on the beach. Oh, sir, can you tell us where we can find Captain Brackett, sir? He's over the head of Company Street. You belong in a minute now. Thank you, sir. That's all, sir. All right, stay in line. How many times do I have to go? Oh, Miss McGregor, you versus going to? Only a few of us. We're going to bring back some wounded. Uh, Miss, Miss Ford was showing them. I don't know. She may stay here at the hospital. Oh, Miss McGregor. You don't get air sick, do you? <laughs> I was thinking maybe you got three bucks in the end. You buy this little package you got here. That stuff's no good. We gave that up last month. And that's a female jerk. <laughs> oh, sir, can I talk to you for a moment? Sir, who is it? Billis, sir. Ruth or Billis? Oh, Billis, what do you want? We're moving out pretty soon. I know, sir. I want to do something for Miss Forbush. Stu Pot, the professor, and myself were wondering if anything's being done while uh, rescuing that French kid off the island. We volunteer for such a project. You can place us in three rubber boats on three different sides of aisles. You can use the hell out of the jack. Thank you. Get the pitch. This is very fun of you, Billis. But you're too late for diversionary activity. See, that started early last yesterday before the second. Uh, uh, you know, there's some. Operation Alligator finally got underway. Landing is on 14. Japanese held islands. I think that's very unfair. First thing they should have done was rescue that French. Yeah, I don't know the reason to do this. Marie Louise is the first island they hit. So, is he alive? We don't know. Lieutenant Bloodland was flew up there this morning to find out. He has to come back. But if the Frenchman is dead, it is unfair. It'd be a damn shame if some part of this big operation didn't save one of the two guys who made it all possible. Beach, far as you can see, men waiting to board ships. The whole picture of the South Pacific has changed. We're going the other way. Captain Brackett, sir. The launch is ready to take your ship. Got a ship, sir? Yes. Hobbiton and I have got a ship. No longer am I allowed to be on the command. Come on, Bill. Five men are Harbinson. Goodbye, Phyllis. Oh, by the way, I never did get you in the room, did I? Huh. No. Oh, I forgot. Forgot what, sir? Your units will be on our ship. I'll be seeing all of you. Get the picture. No, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's not just check moving out. Oh, you guys like coming here. We're ready to load you. All of us are to aboard assigned planes. CVs to embark on carrier six. All Marines to board LCTs. Any questions? Move out. Then you have to learn my 
time that I talked to you. You know, I've 